So Plum Media is a production studio that's been around for 25 years. This building has so much history and just my name tag on my door it just takes me back to the film noir type film. It's kind of what I wanted to incorporate a little bit into this project. Man, that dude is so weird. We should have never hired him. So interesting fact about this building is that it used to be an old casket factory and this used to be the safe. And now they use it for all of the snacks. It's gonna be dark, but then there was light. There we go, a whole studio space. First week has been amazing. I met so many great people here on the team. Everybody's just been welcoming. Hey, welcome to Plum. We are so excited to have you here. Oh, thanks, Evan. That really means a lot. So Aaron needs you here for a staff photo. So I'm about to go down to get my photo taken, and you guys are going to meet Aaron, creator of What the Duck. We kind of casually can do some of this, some of this. You can give me your blue steel. You can give me your... It's beautiful. Oh, wow. Look at this guy. Rich and Bruce founded Plum Media in 1997, and they purchased this building in 2015. I'm Rich Schmeg. I'm a producer director here at Plum Media. Worked in TV for a long time. Got together with Bruce Gibb, and Bruce and I started Plum Moving Media. Plum has just grown with so many great people. I just love coming into this job every day. So one thing that I learned from Rich in my first two weeks has been that presentation is also a form of storytelling. Even including chairs and how they're positioned at a table. All the chairs here need to be positioned and turned here to the left. It just shows attention to detail, which is critical in storytelling. They have this awesome Mac Hall of Fame. So I remember using one of these computers in elementary school. They've used these like floppy drives. We would play like Oregon Trail on them. And these are like the original Mac Power Books before they called them the MacBook Pros. Let's open this bad boy up. Man, this is this is bad. The focus ring is super smooth. And don't quote me on this, but I also believe this lens is parafocal as well. If you focus on something, say at 18 mil, you zoom all the way into 70. You got the same focus on there. Uh, so F55 time. Everything nice and organized. Look at that. You know how much easier it's gonna be pulling focus with these viewfinders? A lot more comfortable. Ho <laughs> hoo! Yes, these are beautiful. First project I remember filming was a 48 hour film you know, competition. And we did it in my parents' basement. It was like a film noir project. Listen, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. She was killed. I can't keep on you down this path, Jack. I'm sorry. The lake is cold, Jack. So I'm gonna put a link to that short film in the description. Oh, somebody left the light on. Let's save some energy. Let's cut the lights out. So that was a mini studio tour. They have like a control room. So if people are filming on that side, which was the studio space I just showed you guys, this would be the live room with the switchers and say if they're recording a live event. How long have you been standing there? Like 10 minutes. Who the are you? First off, watch your tone. I'm the narrator. Well, how about you get back to work? These YouTube whatever things are pretty weird. So, fun fact, 
I just learned this actually. Ken told me about this. I'm Ken Shellen. I'm a writer slash director slash producer here at Plum. I would not be sitting here today talking about video production if it weren't for Star Wars and the Muppets. As a kid seeing Star Wars, I was like blown away, wow. And Jim Henson and the Muppets, just the creative craziness and the creative explosion that was the Muppets and Sesame Street and all that stuff, that all occurred at the right time in my childhood to inspire me to get into video. You guys see that I have the gear out of the box, but for example, if I was to put this back in the equipment room, you know, instinct would be lock both handles, you know, set it on the floor. That actually can cause a lot of issues if, say, somebody saw this piece of gear, just grabbed it and took it on the chute. Well, guess what? There's no mic in the box. So, and I know a lot of you production guys out there probably already know this, but if, for example, this is empty, or one piece of gear is missing because you have batteries charging or something. Close the box. Leave one of these locks open. So that somebody in passing will see this and be like, oh, this means a piece of gear is missing. So I'm not just gonna take this out on the shoot. So, little fun fact for you guys, just learned it this week. I think it's, it's pretty cool. All right, so I just got back from the Milwaukee Bucks gather space shoot. So basically what I did, I worked with Deverick, who's in charge of renting out the space. Took me through a tour of the whole space. I had it mic'd up. What I've been experimenting with lately on the A7S III is actually not using the internal IBIS or optical stabilization. So I turned all that off and I've been using the Sony Catalyst Browse software to, to stabilize the footage basically. So thank you, Rich, and everybody for welcoming me to the team. I'm excited to be here. Just excited to learn and to hopefully contribute to the great culture here and just telling more amazing stories. If you guys are storytellers or video producers or somebody just trying to break into this industry, I'm excited to share my journey and what I learned with you guys. So please like and subscribe, share this channel. So thank you for taking a tour of the space with me, the studio, the, the building. And I'm just excited to share more stories with all of you. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.